morning and welcome to Palm and Passion Sunday. We uh, are going to begin with uh, Hosanna. Blessed is the one who comes in God's name. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Let us pray. Assist us mercifully with your help, O saving God, that we may enter with joy upon the contemplation of those mighty acts whereby you have given us life and immortality through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let joy fill our hearts this day as we shout our hosannas prepare our hearts to worship and celebrate and remind us that the shouting will die out the time of trial still lies ahead of us and soon there will be a deathly quiet on the land as the savior gives his life for us amen now listen to this palm sunday proclamation from the gospel of mark when they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethphage and Bethany, near the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, go into the village ahead of you, 
and immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Just say this, the Lord needs it and will send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, what are you doing untying the colt? They told them what Jesus had said, and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Then Jesus entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Let us join with Rachel as we sing, this is the Lord. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. We come to prepare for the holiest of weeks. When you rode into Jerusalem, the people waved palms with shouts of acclamation. We wave our imaginary palm branches in anticipation. and We lay our love before you to cushion your walk. We journey through praise with joy on our lips. We travel through betrayal and death, cradling hope deep in our hearts. Jesus, 
Grant that when the shouting dies, we may still walk beside you, even to a cross. Lead us through this week. We want to follow you, for you are the life we long for, the word who sustains us, the one who sets aside all power, glory, and might, modeling humility and obedience for all of us. Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed are you who brings us the kingdom of God. Amen. A reading from the book of Isaiah. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning, God wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. God has opened my ear and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. God helps me, therefore I have not been disgraced. Therefore I have set my face like a flint and I know that I shall not be put to shame. The one who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is God who helps me. Who will declare me guilty? Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks, Thanks be to God.
a reading from the book of Philippians. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God and did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and, I, and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Now I invite you to listen as Rachel sings our gospel hymn. those who are here listed as participants in the dramatic reading of the passion story to be ready as together the passion of Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you Lord Christ. Now Jesus stood before the governor and the governor asked him, are you the king of the Jews? You say so. But when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he did not answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many accusations they are making against you? 
but he gave him no answer, not even to a single charge, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now, at the festival, the governor was accustomed to release the prisoner for the crowd, anyone whom they wanted. At that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Jesus Barabbas. So after they had gathered, Pilate said to them, Whom do you want me to release for you? Jesus Barabbas or Jesus who is called the Messiah? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that they had handed him over. While he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent word to him, have nothing to do with that innocent man. For today I have suffered a great deal because of a dream about him. Now the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus killed. The governor again said to them, which of the two do you want me to release for you? And they said, everyone, Barabbas. 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 Pilate said to them, then what should I do with Jesus who is called the Messiah? All of them said, crucify, crucify him. Then he, was, then he asked, Why? What evil has he done? Let him be crucified. crucified. Let him be crucified. So when Pilate saw that he could do nothing, but rather that a riot was beginning, he took some water and washed his hands before the crowd saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourselves. Then the people as a whole answered, His blood, His blood be on us, us and on our, our children. children. So he released Barabbas for them. And after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the governor's headquarters and they gathered the whole cohort around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him. And after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on his head. They put a reed in his right hand and knelt before him and mocked him saying, Hail, King of the Jews. They spat on him and took the reed and struck him on the head. After mocking him, they stripped him of the robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. As they went out, they came upon a man from Cyrene named Siren, Simon. They compelled this man to carry the cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of a skull, they offered him wine to drink, mixed with gall. But when he tasted it, he would not drink it. And when they had crucified him, they divided his clothes among themselves by casting lots. Then they sat down there and kept watch over him. Over his head, they put the charge against him, which read, this is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Then two bandits were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, you were going to destroy the temple and build it in three days. If you are the son of God, save yourself and come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests also, along with the scribe and elders, were mocking him, saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. He is the king of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now, and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God deliver him now if he wants to. For he said, I am God's son. The bandits who were crucified with him also taunted him in the same way. From noon on, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And about three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice. Eli, Eli, lema sabachthani. This man is calling for the prophet Elijah. At once, one of them ran and got a sponge, filled it with sour wine, put it on a stick and gave it to him to drink. But the others said, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. 
Then Jesus cried again with a loud voice and breathed his last. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rocks were split. The tombs were opened and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. After his resurrection, they came out of the tombs and entered the holy city and appeared to many. Now when the centurion and those with him who were keeping watch over Jesus saw the earthquake and, took, and what took place, they were terrified and said, Truly, this man was God's son. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Christ. O Christ. And now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts move us to walk the walk of the prophets and get our timing right that we might act in time to save rather than to lament. Oh God, the one who stepped in in time to save us. Well, every year, Christians rehearse the events of Jesus's life during this, his last week. This year, I find myself starting Holy Week with a serious question about the prophetic path that Jesus walked to the cross. And that question is, are prophets the only ones who get the timing right? Are the rest of us predisposed to ignore their message until it's too late? I enter this week with many news stories from around the world bouncing around my brain. Echo Park, the U.S. southern border with Mexico, Atlanta, Boulder, Georgia, Washington, Myanmar. In each case, if leaders had acted on the challenges those regions represent, when prophets were saying what should be done, we would be facing a better situation than we are facing now. And I find the same kinds of stories in my own life, actions I didn't take when I first knew I needed to, issues I didn't confront with my children in time, the church's failure to face uncomfortable situations head on in the moment they arose. And as I reflect on each of those stories in light of today's Passion Sunday texts, I find myself both encouraged and discouraged about joining Jesus on the prophetic path. It's encouraging to recognize that there are prophets who speak up about the truth in time to do something about challenging situations. But it's discouraging to see that the world never acts on those truths in time and that the prophets keep getting killed. Is it because people don't think the difficult actions called for by the prophets are urgent enough to carry out? Or do they, we, believe we know a better way? Or do they, we, just hope that the problem will go away if we ignore it? Whatever the reason, the result is a crisis that could have been avoided, but now only offers options between bad and worse. So Echo Park has been on front pages this week as government forces have cleared it of the unhoused residents who have occupied it for the last 18 months, amid protests from neighbors and advocates. Prophets spoke up years ago, saying that housing and income equalities had to be addressed to avoid greater crises in the future. But the world, we always found it more convenient to postpone those conversations. The stories of our migrant siblings charting a course from Central America and flooding our southern border pit humane policies of welcome against harsher policies of effective deterrence. Decades ago, prophetic voices calling for justice in Central America were blown out of earshot 
by the dominant political winds of the day. Back-to-back -back mass shootings in the last two weeks have reawakened familiar debates about gun safety that arise after each one of the hundreds of mass shootings that have occurred in the last 25 years. Money and power have thwarted even the will of the majority of citizens to protect people from gun violence. Last week's changes in voting laws in Georgia, against the backdrop of recent electoral upsets and blatant expressions of racism around the country, reveal that the arc of racial justice in this country keeps getting pushed back. Prophets who address blatant racism in voting laws have lost their lives. And the ongoing conflict in Myanmar has become a surrogate battleground for the United States and Russia, with the people being the ones who suffer. Prophetic voices in the form of students, Buddhist monks, and an ousted Nobel Peace Prize winning, Peace Prize winning civilian leader have all called for systemic change in that country. And the current generation just wants to protect the small advances won through all those efforts. Well, a similar dynamic took place under Isaiah's prophetic leadership. Isaiah kept offering hope to the exiles who were still in Babylon. But those exiles had become weary of Isaiah's constant predictions of deliverance which never materialized. And so they rejected his prophetic message. But as Isaiah writes in today's passage, he was undeterred. God had given him the word and he must deliver it even at the cost of personal suffering. And suffer he did. Gospel writers later used the same images that Isaiah used to describe his own suffering, to describe what Jesus experienced centuries later. Isaiah was confident that God would eventually prove him right. And in the same way, Jesus's passion was the outcome of his obedient delivery of the message of the kingdom, despite people's rejection and his constant reliance that God would prove him right. Of course, many in our country today claim that mantle of prophecy. The QAnon phenomenon may be the most significant but it is the loss of a sense of history that makes people believe false prophets. Isaiah uses a phrase that could be translated in several ways. The tongue of a teacher, those who are taught, or as the message translated, a well-taught tongue. And as is often true in biblical texts like that, the ambiguity actually enriches the meaning rather than obscures it. In this case, it emphasizes that the only way to teach is to learn, and the only way to lead is to be able to follow. But either way, it's the ability to speak from hard-won ideals derived not from scattered dreams of starry nights, but in the full light of morning. And that is one difference between prophetic wisdom and conspiracy theories that we need to keep remembering. Both Isaiah and Jesus understood that sometimes we have to go deeper than a person wants to go to sustain the weary with a word. Isaiah knew how to sustain the weary with a word, even the ones who were weary of his message. Notice that Isaiah didn't say comfort the weary. Comfort doesn't always sustain. It may help the weary to cope. And that may be necessary, but it's never enough. To sustain the weary, it's not enough to help them avoid getting in trouble, or even to avoid getting overwhelmed with sadness or anger or grief. We must help them embrace the trouble, the sadness, the anger, and support them through it. And that's where Isaiah's and Jesus's examples offer encouragement for our discouragement. When we or our leaders fail to act in time and let crises get out of hand, we can seek the one that Isaiah calls the servant to sustain us with a word. The gospel writers saw Jesus with that same spirit of the servant, 
And that's why they quoted this section of Isaiah so often. That spirit sustains and encourages us, whether we're lamenting the impact of the delay in finding answers for the unhoused in Echo Park, or sustenance for the weary travels at the US-Mexico border, or hope for the grieving and frightened communities of Atlanta and Boulder, or strength for our family and friends and neighbors, weary from the demands and anxieties of a culture that feels more and more alien and from keeping so much inside because they don't think anyone will understand them. First, we must receive that word for the weary from God. We must receive it ourselves. Only then can we offer it to others. Together, we might find what we need to stand up to the challenges of today rather than clean up the mess after they become crises tomorrow. By listening to those issues and bringing them into light, a deeper healing can come and a more effective sustenance can result. And weary people, frankly, won't always appreciate the sustenance when comfort is what they want. Jesus's contemporaries certainly didn't. When he entered Jerusalem on Palm Sunday, they expected comfort. When what they got was sustenance, their hosannas turned into crucify him. So the ability to walk in obedience and the gifting to teach and sustain those who are tired of the long road ahead sometimes produce not reward, but derision from fellow travelers. And that may be what it means for us to take up our cross and follow Jesus. So I repeat the questions I asked at the beginning. Are prophets the only ones who get the timing right? And are the rest of us predisposed to, to ignore the message until it's too late? Jesus's sustaining word just might encourage us enough to pay attention when we can still bring healing rather than violence. Friends, may it be so. Amen. Let us enter a time of prayer now as we sing with Rachel within our darkest night as we face this week of darkness. Steadfast love, you hand us the palm branches so we can wave them in hope. You steady us in the days when pain is stuck to the bottom of our lives, when fear is our constant companion. We empty ourselves so you might fill us with joy. Humble healer, when our mouths turn numb and we cannot speak our dreams, you tenderly caress our cheeks, leaning over to hear our faltering words. When our arms have grown weak from the burdens we carry, you take them from us and strengthen us with your mercy. We empty ourselves so you might fill us with grace. Voice of wisdom. When death hovers so close, we can feel its cold breath. You come to us. The warm breath of resurrect, resurrection, pushing aside our fears. 
When we hesitate to walk into the unknown stretching before us, you tightly clasp our hands and teach us the first step. We empty ourselves so you might fill us with peace. Voice of peace. When violence break, breaks out of its cage and touches entire communities, just as you cried at the loss of your friends, so we grieve and pray for the survivors, friends, and families of those hurt and killed in the Atlanta and Boulder shootings. Bring your peace, safety, and justice to our Asian siblings and to all who live in fear of random killing. We repent of any complicity with white supremacy lingering in us and in the church at large. God and community, holy and one, we open our hearts to you. Amen. Amen. Gracious God, we have wasted opportunities to interrupt darkness. Too often we come behind the tragedy and fail to cry out before the horror. We have cried much over caskets and not wept enough over wars. We have sent flowers for funerals and not enough for just because or to say, I love you. Teach us to intercede and be willing to interrupt when the warnings of death have reached our ears. Forgive us for giving our attention to smelling the roses for so long that we have lost the ability to smell the stench of death. Awaken us to the possibilities of interrupting injustice and not just participating post-mortem. Amen. Our God who vindicates you is near and has heard your confessions. You will not be put to shame. With God as your help, no one can declare you guilty. Siblings in Christ, your sins are forgiven. Be at peace. Amen. Amen. Now I invite you to unmute yourselves as we have an opportunity to share our prayers with one another at a more intimate level. And I invite those who are on Facebook to share your prayer requests with us, and we will include those as well. Who and what is on your heart this morning? My friend uh, Glo, that's her name, she's Filipino. She and her daughter, they live in Torrance. And she was married to uh, a Japanese and her husband passed away a year ago. Her daughter is about maybe 14, 15 years old. And Glo was really sad because her daughter is so afraid to go out. Mm -hmm because she might get killed. Mm. So I'm imagining, you know, it's not just a gloss, uh, glorious daughter, but mm. perhaps many young Asians mm. yeah. um, feel the same way. That they are, you know, they're really fearing for their lives. And my heart goes out to glow, especially her daughter. The second one is, her name is Army. Army is the wife of... Uh, my classmate in high school, his name was Arnold. Arnold uh, was a lawyer in the Philippines and they were really close <laughs> as husband and wife. And sad to say, Arnold got COVID and he had a heart attack and he passed oh, away last week. And mm -hmm. so Army's kids don't even know how to console their mother because they were really, really close. So this is also getting to me. <laughs> Thank you. I'd like to extend a prayer for uh, Marcus's father, who unfortunately took a fall the other day and broke his hip and has to get some surgery mm -hmm. in, in your prayers. And in the same week, uh, his, um, his father's sister, his aunt, a uh, was diagnosed with breast cancer. So we're just keeping Marcus's family in this week. 
Thank you. What is your father's name, Marcus? Hector? Mm -hmm. Okay. Pray. Prayers for you, Hector. Amen. Amen. Let's pray for the 200 uh, unhoused that were um, moved from um, Echo Park. I pray for their safety. I hope and I pray that they will get the help that they need. Mm -hmm. And I pray for uh, better wisdom and guidance from our leaders in answering the needs of the 60,000 homeless that are in the Los Angeles air, uh, community and area. Amen. Amen. Other prayer requests? I want to say thanks for our, our, our bishop who was actively there uh, talking uh, to uh, the police, to um, minister to the unhoused that were experiencing this trauma and uh, the media. He represented us so well with such a loving heart. I'm thankful that he was there. For wise writing about it, uh, a very complex situation that he wrote wisdom. That was yes. <laughs> so the peace of God be with you. And also, also with, you. with you. Also with you. Greet one another with that peace. <laughs> Robert. Peace, everybody. Peace, everybody. Peace, Peace, Peter, Peace, Heather. All right. <laughs> God's peace to all of you. <laughs> so is anybody uh, celebrating a birthday these days? Who dares to tell us about that? Is that somebody saying they have a birthday or a radio in the background? <laughs> all right. Okay. Well, I invite you to mute then and... Um, I just want to remind you of the uh, upcoming events uh, on the first four days of April, Monday, Thursday, um, this Thursday at 6 p.m. Um, if you can uh, show up at the church, if you're uh, vaccinated, if you're feeling safe enough to do that, we're going to be, there will be seats outside. There will be seats just inside the open um, windows um, that, are, that are doors, windows that will be fully open. Um, so we invite you to come. Uh, we will be doing hand washing. Uh, we will be sharing the Eucharist. Um, come masked. Uh, we will be keeping social distance. Um, and if you are not coming, cannot come, uh, we invite you. We will be on Zoom and Facebook um, as well. And the same is true for Friday when we'll do the Stations of the Cross. Um, and um, so we invite you to, to come to the church uh, or to be on Zoom or Facebook. Um, and then on Saturday night, the third, uh, we invite you to join the diocesan Easter Vigil, uh, which I think will be a beautiful service of music and readings uh, at 8 p.m. on the, the Diocese of Los Angeles Facebook page or, or YouTube channel. Um, and then on Easter Sunday, um, some of us are going to show up uh, for church, and we welcome you and invite you to join us at 11 a.m. And those who can't, uh, we'll continue to be on Zoom and Facebook. So however you might, uh, if you do show up, 
don't forget your mask and don't forget to socially distance. Um, so that's the, the week coming up as we walk with Jesus through death to life. Um, and we finally have a time for the um, Interfaith Book Club. Remember, we're, we're reading the novel, If Beale Street Could Talk by James Baldwin. Um, and we are gonna be meeting every other Saturday at three o'clock. We used to meet at four, now we're gonna meet at three o'clock and it's starting on April 10th. So there's the Zoom link. If you would like to have that email to you or be added to the group, uh, just let me know and I'd be glad to add you to the email list. Um, and the food bank, which was closed because of the disturbances in Echo Park uh, two days ago, um, is going to be open um, differently. We're usually not open on Good Friday, but they're going to be open on Good Friday uh, this Friday. So if you know of people who are food insecure and need that, um, we invite you to um, attend. Um, so let us take our offering. Um, feel free to donate at the website or mail a check or bring it uh, this week in person. Um, as we listen to Rachel sing this uh, anthem in German, um, but with the words that are right here. Blessed are you, God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have these gifts to share. 
accept and use our offerings for your glory and for the service of your kingdom. Blessed be God forever. Amen. Friends, this is the joyful feast of the people of God. And Jesus invites all who seek to trust him to share in the feast which he has prepared. So come to his table now with hope and confidence as God's children. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is indeed right to give you our thanks and praise, O God, for you alone are good, and your steadfast love is forever. The creation of the world was your doing and is a marvel to our eyes. You gave prophets the tongues of teachers to comfort our weariness and teach us the way back to you. But we turned our back on them. When judgment did not lead to redemption, you sent Jesus to reach out in love, to bring us home to you. Though he was rejected by those who had cheered him, you made him the cornerstone of new life and raised him to the highest place of honor. He has opened the gates of justice and become our salvation. So with those who spread cloaks before you, and with those who are sustained by your love, we join our voices singing. Holy are you, sustainer of the weary, and blessed is Jesus Christ, your love become human, who emptied himself of glory to be filled with our broken hopes and hearts, chose the path of suffering love so that we could run through the streets of the kingdom, waving branches of joy, and walked the sin-cold stones into the tomb, which could not hold him, so we could join our voices together, Hosanna, Hosanna, he is risen. And as we journey through Jerusalem and beyond, as we struggle with death, loss, and grief, we would ponder that mystery we call faith. We remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in. Here at the table, graced with creation's gifts, we discover the world you intend. We gather at this table, the bread and the cup made sacred by the presence of your spirit. For on the night before he died for us, Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, gave it to his friends and said, take, eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. As supper was ending, 
Jesus took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. As we prepare to eat of the bread, we pray that its grace might strengthen us so we would become as persistent as you in confronting injustices, challenging oppressive actions, and reaching out to lift the fallen. And when the gates of joy have been opened to us, we will spend moment by moment, every knee in creation bending, singing our praises to you, God in community, holy in one. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, I invite you to unmute that we might say this together. We pray. Our Father in heaven, Lord, 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 We are one body, one spirit. We will love one another. Love one another. As Christ, Christ loves us. And these are the gifts of God for the people of God. And wherever you are on your journey through life, you are welcome at Jesus' table to receive Christ's heavenly food. <laughs> So now I invite you to pray together this prayer as we experience this spiritual communion together. My Jesus, My Jesus, I believe you are truly present in the blessed sacrament of your love. I love you of all things. I call on you and my soul. I cannot now receive you. Please, so you have already come. I embrace you. I have already come. I embrace you. I unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. And let us pray together. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, Hello. you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Now sing along with Rachel this rather long, but worthy of this week, Traveling the Road to Freedom.
So go now and follow Christ in obedience. Have the same mind as was in Christ Jesus. Keep your ears open to God's teaching. Be humble, even in the face of hostility, and do not turn back. And may God help you and keep you from disgrace. May Christ Jesus lead you through the gates of justice. And may the Holy Spirit keep you in God's steadfast love and fill your mouths with praise to the glory of God. And so we go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen. Amen. And as we say farewell to those who have been with us on Facebook, I want to remind everyone we'll be back on Facebook, on Zoom, and in person at the church on Thursday, April 1st, uh, for our Monday Thursday service. Um, with communion and uh, washing of hands. Um, so we invite you to join us Friday, the same thing. And Sunday morning at 11 o'clock, we will be here on Zoom, Facebook, and at the church. So join us. And those who are 